Hey friends, what's up? Kaz here. Welcome back to another server admin tutorial or bucket spigot plugin tutorial. If you're joining me for the first time, feel free to hit that subscribe button because I do these every week. If you have a suggestion of one you'd like me to do, feel free to comment that in the jibbles below and I'll capture that, give you a shout out when I get around to that. Keep in mind, I have like about 300 suggestions waiting, so it's kind of like filtering them out. We'll get to it eventually, but it may take a while. If you're wondering about all this, it's because I am on vacation this week and I'll be responding uh, beginning of next week to comments. So I probably, I'm guessing somewhere in the neighborhood of like 400 comments to respond to. So be patient guys and I'll get to it once I'm back in the swing of things. All right, so this is an idea that I've had for a very long time and I thought it'd be a great time to do it because it's kind of quick and easy. It's I've been kind of working on it in my mind for a while and I'm gonna remove those now. So. It's really bright where I'm at. <laughs> so bright that it, in the video I need to have sunglasses. But anyway, this is basically kind of like how to troubleshoot general general plugin issues that you may run into because I answer a lot of questions across a lot of plugins. And these are some of the most common questions or issues I've run into. So I have five things and then I got three common errors to hit. So the first and most important thing and the main reason that you run into problems is because you're not running the right version of bucket or spigot. Now, this a lot of, this actually is pretty much in the wake of the litigation against Mojang uh, right around the time 1.8 was released, where they had they put a halt and they couldn't distribute 1.8 anymore. Bucket could not, uh, so spigot kind of came with a a way around it at two months later and that's awesome because then all the plugins started updating to the new version but people have been hanging on to that 1.7 all the plugins are on 1.8 nearly all of them so update your stuff and get on that version now the way that you can check to make sure you're on the right version is in your console you can just type in version so if you're running it locally this is what you'll see if you're running it in a hosting environment it'll be like a box you know on your console you can just type in version and it'll tell you what version you're running this is the main spot that you want to take a look at it right there and then it'll actually tell you how many versions you are behind if you're in game you can actually do it in game it's just slash version and it'll tell you the same information so you want to figure that out first and then you want to go to the plugin page and see what's going on now this is kind of the downside of spigot plugins is it's not easy to figure out which version they work with typically you're going to go to updates and usually the author will just say in the plugin you know in the update there um fortunately if you go down and you're like oh well i want to get it before you know with 1.83 not 1.87 you can click on version history and download older versions of that plugin now it's super easy in bucket if you're in bucket you scroll down and then over here it's going to tell you which version of uh, Minecraft it works with sometimes there'll be extra stuff in the parentheses so usually if it's like 1.81 it'll most likely run on 1.87 or 1.88 but uh, that's the first thing you want to make sure is make sure you're running the correct version now that is like 90% of the questions I get is it's basically because you're running the wrong version so great start now the second thing is if you're running into issues with a plugin where it's giving you an error like uh, command not found or or command or doesn't do anything when you run a command that's supposed to run with that plugin and you do slash plugins or if you're in in here you do plugins it's going to list all the plugins if they're in red it's because they failed to start now there's a couple reasons that it could fail to start the first is because you're not running the right version go see step one the second is you're missing a required plugin and so I'll, I have an example here. So basically, you want to check your console as it's starting up. So we're gonna we're gonna fire this server up. It's a little bit it's a little out of date, but that's fine. So we're gonna start it up, and we're just gonna watch. Now you can watch this in your MultiCraft. You know, if you're with MC Pro Hosting or whatever, but you might miss some of this. We'll talk about that in a second. You want to kind of look down. You want to find this error spot, and then sometimes it'll, it'll have like a bunch of extra things in here. Um, and those will often point to what the issue is. But the main thing is could not hook into vault. And then it says easy ranks is disabled, disabling easy ranks. So that's what it does. It, it fails to start because of some reason. In this case, it vault wasn't installed. I actually turned vault off. So we want to go into the plugins folder. We want to enable that and then start it back up. So 
maybe it, maybe it scrolled too fast and you missed it in your console log for your host what you want to go into is your logs folder and then you're going to find this now latest is the current running log so the one that is running right now every time you restart your server it's going to create a new log now you need to unzip these before you can read them that's just kind of how it goes so download it and then unzip it you know we'll, i'll just uh extract here and now i have that log so now you can open it in in uh, notepad but it looks kind of yucky and all that i always like to view it in notepad plus plus makes it a little bit easier to to view it kind of does some formatting in there but this captures everything like chat everything all that all the background stuff so if you're trying to settle the dispute you can even come in here and do a search which is control f and then look for the username and it'll search through the whole thing so check your console check your logs and make sure you're running the correct version okay so those are some pretty basic ones the next one is we're going to hop over into minecraft to check this out okay so here we are in the craft of mine and uh maybe maybe you're playing and somebody is like lag lag i get a lot of lag your server's crap blah 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 well you can do slash tps and it's going to show you a quick quick rundown of your um what's called your ticks per second basically it's saying how fast your server is processing its information so if this gets lower than 19.5 your users will start seeing block lag. we will see when they place a block, it'll be delayed um, for when it will show up. And then if it gets about 19, that's going to get more severe. And then if you get under like in the under 18 or low 18s, then you're going to get some like hit lag and, and all that stuff where it's really delayed because the servers can't server can't keep up with the processing. Now, 90% of the time when people complain about lag, it's because of two things, connections and their crappy computer can't render everything that it's seeing now that's how if somebody says hey it's lag you can just do slash tps and you go you know what tps is 19.98 it's you not the server now if that does get low then it's your server and to be troubleshooting that stuff is is kind of a little bit more in depth um you start tracking down any kind of big um <clears throat> Any kind of big plugins that you might be running, maybe disable some of the bigger ones momentarily just to see if, if there's any change in that. Could be too many worlds loaded, uh, too much um, entities on those worlds. The other thing is it depends on the server host of your server. You're sharing, if you're with a hosting company, you're actually sharing that physical server with other people. And depending on the processing power of that server or node, you could run into problems it's actually the processor that record that is is more important than more ram you know for some reason we all think that more ram makes it run better and that is true to an extent but it's more important to have a good processor so you could check in with your host to see what the processor load is on your node for those tps issues so if you want a, a more extensive breakdown the command that you're gonna you're gonna want to run is slash lag and that will actually show you how many chunks are loaded per world how many entities which will help you kind of track down where the tps you can see the max the memory used and the allocated memory so if you're running out of memory it will start slowing down because it just can't keep up now if you want to lower the amount of chunks that are loaded you can actually remove each world from memory using a multiverse command which will be on the screen here and then that will you set the memory to false so it won't keep that stuff in memory when nobody's in that world and that will kind of help with some of the the performance of your server so that's it for that now the next bit to talk about is permissions this is the other this is probably the most important thing to figure out for your server it's the number one plugin to configure and understand for your server it's up to you to set it up and configure it how you want it to be so permissions plugin it manages all the commands that your users can can have and it even prefixes and suffixes and and access to different things and the 
it's super important to understand. So I have a great plugin tutorial on permissions X, which I'd highly recommend to anybody. I don't recommend group manager because a lot of the question permissions issues that people have are in regards to group manager and that how it does its group mirroring between worlds. Now PEX doesn't really do that. It has a different way to do per world permissions. So it's less easy to mess up where group manager, it's super easy to mess up where as soon as you go to a different world, you're in a different group and it's because you haven't set up that group mirroring correct in the config.yml file of your group manager. So what the permissions plugins are is basically every plugin out there has a permission node which is like a which usually is the permission the plugin name dot whatever associated with a command and then you basically add that to your user or your group and then you add your users to a group and then that gives them access to that plugin command. So I highly recommend that you watch that tutorial before you even start building a server because it's essential to understand is that permission. Now the last bit, the last thing that I run into a lot of prob problems with is connections. Now if you're running your server at home, there's a, there's a concept that you need to understand is called port forwarding. When a connection comes into your home, it hits your router before and it won't go anywhere. It just stops right there unless you configure your router to forward that connection on. Now the connections come in on what's called a port and that's how that's how different services are distinguished between different things. So like if you're doing a um, secure file transfer, it's going to be on port 443. But if you're just cr cr uh, cruising the internet, going to Facebook or whatever, it goes over port 80. So there's no, no issues when it's, it's going out and coming back in. So what you need to do is you need to configure your router to forward 25565, which there's a link to a more in-depth detail tutorial <clears throat> to your internal server address, which will be most likely be 192.168. Once you have that set up, then you're going to give your external IP address to your friends so that they can connect. Now you get your external by going to google.com and just like typing in what is my IP and it'll give you your IP address. Now if you're running Votifier at home, you need to forward port 8192. If you're running Votifier on a host, you need to run it on a different port because likely somebody's already using that port. All right, so the last section of this video is going to be the three most common errors that I've heard of and that I've seen is one, you'll get a message, you know, your server will barely start and it'll say cannot bind port. And that's because you're already running a version of Minecraft on that port. So it can't listen again on the same port. It'll look like this or you didn't properly stop your previous Minecraft uh, server. You didn't actually hit stop. So what you want to do to properly stop a, a server is just do stop. And the second common error is this one, unable to access a jar file. And that means it's not finding the jar file because the name is incorrect. As you can see, it's 1.8 and it's actually supposed to be 1.87. And the last one, I just have a screenshot of it. It's in re relation to bungee cord and it's called IP forwarding or it says you know, unable to forward IP. And it's because you haven't set up your bungee cord correctly. There's two spots that you need to set up is in your spigot.yml for each server, you need to set up bungee cord to true. And then in your bungee cord config.yml, you need to set IP forward to true. And then that, that'll all work. If you want to see a more extensive in-depth look at bungee cord, feel free to comment on, or feel free to click on this link to my tutorial on that i go very in depth on how to set up bungee cord and everything that's required for that so hopefully that was helpful for you guys just wanted to get you guys some good tools so that you can troubleshoot your servers quicker than just waiting for somebody like me to respond or somebody on a forum to respond and just to equip you server admins to run better servers i hope you found it helpful this is cos from mcfriends reminding you guys all enjoy the game god bless